of the session. Sorry, there's some more people coming in. Hi, Jalpa, that's absolutely fine. Yeah. So the first half of the session each week will be on bookkeeping transactions, the second half, the bookkeeping controls. And even if you haven't done one of the units yet, um, you're more than welcome to join in. Sorry, there's someone else coming in. Um, sorry, can I ask you a quick question, please? Yes, of course you can. Yeah, so today, um, well, it's my first time here on um, on Zoom thing. So I'm just wondering, so today will you be teaching double entry, the transaction, or is it bookkeeping control? Um, a little bit of both. So we're not teaching, we're, we're doing more of a recap. Okay, yeah. Throughout. Sorry, it's just people are just going into a waiting room, so I'm just letting them in. So if I yeah. go quiet, um, that's just what I'm doing. Okay, so this evening, so for the first part of the session, as I say, we're going to do bookkeeping transactions. We're going to look at a little bit of general double, uh, double entry. And then the second part, for the controls unit, we're going to have a little look at reconciliations. So this evening, um, it'll be the reconciliation between the sales ledger control account and the sales ledger, the purchase ledger control account against the purchases ledger. Okay. Okay, so oops, so we have the sales ledger control account. So can you remember what entries may you find in a sales ledger control account? So if I go to a blank piece of paper. So again, you can either, you can unmute yourself and join in speaking or you can just type it into the chat box if you prefer. Uh, thinking of a sales ledger control account, remember the sales ledger control account is an asset account. Yes, it's our receivables, Noreen. So, first of all, what, what may we have on the debit side of the sales ledger control account? What might you see? Balance brought forward. Yeah, excellent. Yeah, the balance brought down. So because it's an asset account, the balance brought down will always be on the debit side. What else? Sales day book. Yeah, excellent. I can see Madalena has typed that in as well. Yes, yeah, so I'll put credit sales. Okay, so what may we find on the credit side of the sales control account? Uh, discount allowed. Excellent. Cash book. Yeah, I can see Madalena's put bank. I'll put bank. Is it the same thing, cash book and bank? It's the same, right? Yeah, yeah. It just yes. means that it's an amount received from the customer. Yes. Yes, totally. yeah, excellent. Sales returns. Oh, someone else is wanting to be in. And another one is um, debt, irrecoverable cover, debts. Yeah, excellent. Have we forgotten anything? I think that's it. Irrecoverable debts. And then someone quite rightly said, Megan, the balance carried down. If you ever get confused with the control account, this is a good way to memorise what entries go, go into each of um, the different accounts. Okay, and while we're on this page, we're going to do the same thing, but this time for the purchase ledger control account. So remember, your purchase ledger control account is a liability account. So it contains your trade payables or your credit suppliers. So what might we find um, in this account? 
So let's do the credit side of this account first. Um, balance brought down, brought down? Yeah. So because it's a liability account, the balance brought down will always be on the credit side. Yeah, good, Kirsty. Yeah, Madalena, good purchases. So it's credit purchases. Okay, what might we find on the credit side? Excuse my writing. Yeah, Megan. Yeah, good. Good, Kirsty. So we'd have, yeah, so we'd have discounts received. Yeah, yes, Madalena, you're right. It could be a contra if you have done the controls unit. Yeah. Have purchased returns. Um, what else? What else we're we missing? I'll put contra. Those of you on transactions, though, don't worry about the contra if you haven't, um, if you're not on that unit, because that's introduced in the next one. Is it bank as well? Yeah, bank. bank. Yeah, excellent. And of course, um, I think it was Megan that said. Your balance carried down will always be on the debit side. And those of you on the controls unit, yeah, the control would also be on the credit side of the sales ledger control account. So just remember the sales ledger control account is an asset account. So, um, a debit entry will increase the asset to decrease the asset if be entered as a credit. Purchase ledger control accounts are liability accounts. So to increase the liability, you'd enter it as a credit. To um, decrease the liability, so if you do a purchase returns, um, you make a payment to a credit supplier that will reduce the liability entered as a debit. So just remember you're dead in click. Okay, so we've looked at the sales ledger control account and the purchase ledger control account, but what is the sales ledger and the purchase ledger? How would you describe that? So what is a sales ledger and a purchase ledger? Yes, Rachel, it's a sub subsidiary account. Good. So what what do they contain? What's the difference between them? Yeah. 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 So our sales ledger is contains um, a list of all our individual credit customers. Yes, Megan, all the individual entries. Good. And then our purchase ledger contains a list of all our individual credit suppliers, whereas the control accounts just show the totals. So essentially, whatever the total is of all the accounts in the ledger, Okay, if you can keep um, your microphone on mute, unless you're asking a question, just to avoid any background sound. Okay, so a credit customer buys goods of 1,100 plus VAT. What is the double entry? Credit customer. Yes, yeah, so what what would we do? Yeah. Good. Yeah. So we would debit the sales ledger control account, and that would be of the gross amount. 
be careful in the exam of the wording. So here it says um, 1,100 plus fat. That means it's the net amount. So you would need to add on the 20%, times it by 0.2. Yeah, excellent, Noreen. So the gross amount, 1,320, would be a debit to the sales letter control account. Good. And then we would credit sales, which is our income account, and credit back of 220. Good. Okay, so a credit customer then returns goods costing £240, including VAT. So what is the double entry for the return? Yeah, so where would that £200 go, Noreen? Um. Yeah, it would go to sales returns. And what side? What side would a sales return be on yeah so a sales return would be a debit of the net amount 200 and remember it's a debit because the sales return is an expense but an increase to an expense is a debit and then we would need to credit the VAT account yeah good What else would we need to do? Sorry, it wouldn't be a credit to VAT. So it's a sales return. So remember, VAT is a liability account. So if the liability is increasing, for example, when we make a sale, it would be a credit. But a sales return would be a debit in the account because it would reduce that liability. So that is a debit, yeah. Yeah, excellent, Rachel. Yeah, and then we would credit the sales ledger control account for 240, again, to decrease that asset. Okay, so now um, a credit purchase. So A Limited purchases goods on credit costing £750, including VAT. What is the double entry? Oh, just as good. So, yeah, so this time it's a credit purchase. Um, which purchases account are you crediting, Megan? Debit purchases, yeah. Remember, yeah, Megan, yeah, you, you're right. Yeah, so you would credit the purchase ledger control account for the gross amount of 750 and then you would debit purchases with a net amount and debit the VAT account because remember we can reclaim the VAT back on purchases good okay so a limited then returns goods worth 50 pound net so what is the double entry for a purchase return Good, Madalena. Yeah. So we would credit the purchase returns account because purchase returns is seen as like an income. So it falls onto the click side of dead and click. Then increase to an income account is a credit. Yeah. Good. We would also credit the VAT account. Yeah. And then we yeah, excellent. And then we debit the gross amounts for purchase ledger control account. Good. Okay, so I've just got. Uh, find it. Okay, so here's a question. Um, so the following transactions all took place on 31st of March and I have been entered into the sales day book as shown below. No entries have been made into the ledger system. Sorry, I'm just moving the chat box out of my way so I can read the page. Why is it 
not many of them. Okay, so part A, so this is quite typical of um, a question that you will get in a transactions exam. So part A, what will the entries be in the subsidiary ledger, the sales ledger? So what would the account names be that we would need in the sales ledger? Excellent, Lauren. So it's all the names, the individual names. So remember the subsidiary, it's a list of all the credit customers. Good. And then what amounts would we take? Excellent, yeah, the total column, which is our gross, good. So we've got 24, 42. And would they be a debit or a credit in the sales ledger? Yeah, the debit side, good. And it'd all be a debit because it would be increasing the asset. Okay, so B, what will the entries be in the main ledger? So first of all, the account names, what would they be? Yeah, so we've got our sales ledger control account, sales, and VAT, excellent. Good. So for the sales ledger control account, what would the amount be? Yes, the, always the gross. Good. And would that be a debit or a credit? It's on the debit side, yeah. So whatever we do in the subsidiary account, we do exactly the same in the control account. Okay, and what amount would we take for the sales? Yeah, it's the £170 net amount. And would that be a credit or a debit? Yeah, excellent. It's a credit because sales is an income. The income account is increasing, so it's a credit. And what amount would we put for VAT? Yeah. £34, and would that be on the debit or the credit side? Yeah, excellent, it's a credit. And we know it's a credit because um, that on sales increases the liability. And we also know because these two credits should equal our one debit. And just make sure when you do get a question like this in the exam, just make sure you read, is it a sales day book? Is it a sales return day book? Is it a purchases day book? Or is it a purchase return day book? Because it's so easy to misread the question. And then um, if, if for example, it's a returns account and you do it as a sales account, then you'll get your double entry or the back to front. So just make sure you read the question properly. Okay, so this time, so the following transactions all took place on the 31st of January and have been entered into the purchases day book. So this time we've got a purchases day book.
So what will the entries be on in the subsidiary ledger for the for the account names? What would we put in the subsidiary or the purchases ledger? Yeah, all the individual names. What would the amounts be? Yeah, the gross totals. So these are for credit purchases. So would there be a debit or a credit in the subsidiary? Yeah, there'd be a credit. Sorry, uh, so Megan, I thought in the subsidiary ledgers, we add the net amounts. Um, no, it's always the growth. It's always the growth in both the subsidiary and the control account. It will be in, in purchases and sales that you account for just the net amount. A credit sale, it's credit, it increases our liability. So what would the accounts be, the three accounts in the main ledger? Yeah, so Megan, it's always a gross amount. Yeah, so we've got this little control account, purchases expense account, and BAT. So what amount would we put into the purchase ledger control account? Yeah. And would that be a debit or a credit? Good, Kirsty. Good, Noreen. Yeah, good. So remember, whatever you do in a subsidiary account, you do exactly the same for the control account. So what amount would we put for purchases? And would it be a debit or a credit? Good. Yeah. Purchases is an expense account. Expense falls on the dead side and it's increasing. So it's a debit. And then we've got VAT of 200. Will that be a debit or a credit? Yeah, it's a debit. Because remember, we can reclaim VAT on purchases, so it'll reduce the VAT liability. And also we know that these two debits should equal our one credit. Okay. Oh, sorry, I'm just moving that, okay. So remember the sales, so with, now we're moving on to bookkeeping controls. Remember reconciliation. So the sales ledger control account, the total should equal the same as the total balances in the sales ledger. And the purchase ledger control balance should equal the same as the total um, in the purchases ledger. So if the accounts don't reconcile, then there's an error that needs to be corrected. Okay, so we have here a practice. Okay, so the balance brought down on the sales ledger control account is 14,600. The following customer account balances were in the sales ledger. So we have the sales ledger control account balance. And then here we have all the balances of all our individual credit customers in the sales ledger. Now the total 
of all these should be the same as the total in our sales ledger control account. So part A, reconcile the balances shown above with the sales ledger control account balance. So first of all, we need to enter the balance of the sales ledger control account. So what would we put here? Yeah, so this is just the 14,600 taken from the question. Okay, what's the total um, of the sales ledger account? And let me know if any of you have any problems with this. Yeah, 14,112. So you can see the total of the ledger, um, of the sales ledger is lower than the total in our, in our sales ledger control account. So what's the difference? Good, yeah. Now, with this type of question, students manage this first part fine. Is this next part that causes a few problems? And the only way to really do this is to go through um, each of the options and think to yourselves, ooh, you know, would, would that affect it? Would that be the reason? So for part Part B, it says tick below the one item that may have caused a difference you have calculated in part A. So remember, this is our sales ledger control account balance, and this is our sales ledger balance. So the sales ledger balance is lower than our sales ledger control account balance. So the first option, it says goods returned may have been omitted from the sales ledger. So if we'd have missed off a sales return in our sales ledger, would that affect the difference? Yeah, yes, Megan. So actually, if we had a missed off a sales return, in the sales ledger, then the sales ledger would be higher than the sales ledger control account. You're right. So it's definitely not that option. Okay, what about discounts allowed may have been omitted from the sales ledger? Yeah. So again, yeah, if we do, so if you think, yeah, it would still be higher. Yeah, if we hadn't entered a discount allowed, then it would have been higher. Good. And then the next option, goods returned may have been entered twice in a sales ledger. Yeah, so does anyone else agree with Megan? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're all right, yeah. Yeah, so goods returned may have been entered twice. So that is the reason why it is so low, the sales ledger compared to the sales ledger control account, brilliant. And then if you have a look at the last one, it just says sales invoices may have been entered in the sales ledger twice. Well, again, that would have made the amount higher. So as I said, the only way with this type of question is just go through each of the options and just think, how will that affect the accounts? If you need to scribble out um, a couple of little T accounts. Okay, so do any of you have any questions about this evening?